So you work full time and you want to write a novel or a blog or even maybe is a weekly newsletter that you want to distribute to your friends or a small audience. But then you don't seem like to find the time to write or even sit down. I know the feeling I've been there. This is why in this video, I want to cover the things that have helped me write, keep a full time job, be a parent to a two year old, true videos like these. And recently I took on my weekly newsletter increments, which if you want to sign up where I talk about writing, productivity, and all light hearted things about life, the link is below and let's get started. Hi friends, my name is Mohammed, and I'm a writer. And in this channel, I demystify the writing process. I talk about journaling, I talk about life reflections, productivity, and everything that has to do with books, writing, and life. And the number one thing that has helped me keep a consistent writing habit is setting realistic goals. And this doesn't mean uh, on a daily basis, but also on the bird's eye view goals. For example, I did not start writing a novel the minute I found my passion in writing. First, I started with journaling, and for a very long time, for years, I was just journal about my life, my experience as an immigrant in the US from Yemen, and all the things that made me, me. Then I shifted to short stories, and I wrote horrible, horrible first short stories. They were not even stories, looking back at them right now, and after I've learned so much about storytelling and story writing, they were just the attempts that gave me the permission or the skill set that wrote the first story. I joined an MFA program, a master's for creative writing. And in the program, I wrote a lot more short stories. They were more refined and better and it defined my voice and it gave me the ability or even the belief that I can actually do this. And it's not until recently after I published my first story that I started thinking about writing a novel. Now I'm in the sort of uh, discovery mode of writing my novel about Yemen. And then maybe after that is something else. I don't know. but taking it goal by goal, step by step, and not setting very high goals from the beginning. This also applies to the uh, day to day. You don't set yourself up for failure by wanting to write a thousand words a day where you work full time and you have uh, a family to take care of. Very short sessions where you can complete the thing that you want to or a scene or whatever the case might be so that you can give yourself a cycle of reward so you can come back to the writing. Otherwise, if you keep failing at sitting down and doing the actual writing, then you will burn out and you will hate the process. And if you hate the process, then you cannot do it long term. You have have to love the process because the process will give birth to the end result. This also means very short sessions, 15 to 30 minutes, especially if you haven't wrote in a, in a very long time, you want to give yourself a dose of underachievement. So for example, if you think you have the stamina to sit down and you have the time to sit down 30 minutes, then only sit 50 minutes for the first three, four days. This way you will build, like I said earlier, that inner reward system for you to come back again. And then you can increase it bit by bit. It will reach a time where you can write for the full 30 minutes, even an hour. I think it's George Saunders. I read somewhere in his newsletter that he writes sometimes eight hours a day. Where you can get a stamina like this from, I do not know. Even if I have the time to sit down and write, I don't think I have the stamina to sit for eight hours and write. Maybe I can do it for two hours max. After that, I'll just get bored or tired. But you don't get there by sitting down and doing it. You get there by working yourself up until you can write for that full hour if you have it. And it's better to write consistently every day, if, even if it is for 15 30 minutes than it is to write every three four days or once every uh, other week for three four hours because it gives or it leaves the idea of the story fresh in your mind whatever you're writing about it stays sharp and you can build on it quickly and you can discover it a lot better but then if you just write whenever you feel like it or whenever you are in inspired then you're just breaking into short sessions and you remain in that first draft phase and first drafts, as we all know them, are not the actual writing. They're just the discovery part of the writing. The actual writing happens when you're editing, when you're doing the second, third, and fourth draft. The second strategy that helps me write while having a nine to five is time management. And there are a million strategies, YouTube videos and books about time management. But for me, it comes down to a very, very specific step. Every day in the morning, I will sit down and write three things that I will finish or do that day. I don't start my day by listing a laundry list of things that I have to do that day of sending emails, going to the bank and doing X, Y, and Z. And I don't do that because that overwhelms me and it doesn't give me a sense of um, structure or even vision for how my day will go. But what I do is 
I just list three things that I want to accomplish that day that will make my day a successful one or that will make everything else on the list if there was a list irrelevant but the point of the matter is those three things require at least one hour of focus time and writing is always one of those tasks the way you time manage it into your schedule is by putting it in a block inside your schedule whether you use a google calendar or an owl calendar if there's a block of time there then you know five minutes before or 15 minutes before you get a notification so your mind start preparing itself for you to start writing but this also means identifying the time where you have the most energy for some people they love to write in the morning but other people write better at night once everybody is asleep Tim Ferriss who's someone I follow a lot and read a lot whose podcast is the Tim Ferriss show says he can only write when everybody in his social circle is asleep for him it's later at night from 12 to 2 for me is always in the early morning hours before I even start working I will get to work earlier than my time and I will write for half an hour 45 minutes before I even start my work day and this way I start my day with one of the hardest tasks for me to complete this doesn't mean that it needs a lot of lifting but for me just the concept of sitting down and doing the actual writing while there is nothing that I will materially gain from it is the tough part to get through you know if you are running that rush of dopamine that you get after a run is something that your body desires to return to but writing doesn't have that social media also has it if you start scrolling all those dopamine hits it gives you a sense of reward that you want to go back to it again and again that's why we are able to scroll for 30 minutes 45 minutes or for hours each day without getting bored but for writing it doesn't have that sense of reward so you have to get over that hump in the very beginning but once you start it and enter that that sort of like writing mental flow then you will start just you know forget about the actual task and get it completed the third tip for writing while holding a full-time job is creating a good environment for you to write now for some of us we do not have the space dedicated to a writing whether it's an office or a specific desk or a spot someone like me who lives in New York City although I'm privileged to have my office room or a studio like this one where I have my books here I have another shelf in front of me and I have my camera and lights and this is sort of my uh, spot where I write if I'm working from home but still even if you don't have the space for it at home if you just go to a cafe each and every single day I had a very specific time once you get there your brain will start associating entering that cafe with writing similarly if you're like me and you work at an office when I go to my office the first hour or the first 45 minutes I spend there all my brain is doing is thinking about writing I get there I drop my stuff off and the minute I get on my computer my brain is just thinking about this is the time to write and that doesn't develop from the first three four days that takes a lot of time for your brain to make that association but but once it does then it becomes a lot easier for you to sit down and actually write Neil Gaiman said that he forces himself to be bored until he finds it nothing better than writing to do so he will sit down not check his emails no internet no phone or nothing not even scribbling on an, uh, on a paper he does nothing he just hangs out in his basement where his office is until he gets so bored he has no other choice but to sit down and write and this is how we have to treat it sometimes the other thing about building a good environment is eliminating all distractions phones are the enemy of silence they are the enemy of just sitting down and doing something so solitary like uh, the actual writing or journaling or anything else because they keep us busy they keep us engaged and the whole business behind social media is to keep us hooked into our screens if they can keep us on the screen then they have been successful because that's what they are made for but then when it comes to writing we have to be intentional about what we are doing for the next 30 45 minutes so put your phone away nothing major will happen in the next 30 45 minutes when you are sitting down um, that will alter the course of your life if you just respond to a text message late or respond to a phone call late the likelihood of you missing an important phone call or a text message that you cannot reconnect with the person later is very very low but we lie to ourselves and we keep them close to us because we are addicted to them tip number four and this is the last tip is finding the right community or supportive 
group now for me and i've been guilty of not connecting with them as often as i want to are my writing group or my writing friends from uh, my MFA program. These are the people that I enjoy reading their work. I love when I submit my work to them because I know they will sharpen my work. They will make me better. They will give me the opportunity to realize stuff about my writing I did not see. Things that are good and things that need to be workshopped. But also, the more we meet, the more we hold each other accountable when it comes to writing consistently. Uh, at some point, we even had a Zoom link that we will log in and we will write for 30 to 45 minutes. We don't even say hi to each other when we get on the zoom call just click our cameras are on and we just write and do nothing it's just for us to keep each other on check and if you do not have a group like this trust me there are plenty of people that are looking for people like you as well and a few years ago i was in that same spot where i felt like i didn't have a writing uh, group or friends and it felt lonely but then they are online on instagram pages they are on facebook groups they are at your local libraries or like bookstores so just put yourself out there and the more you ask the more you cold email cold text or just show up at reading events or open mics at nonprofit organizations the more people you will find and the more relationships you will build and hopefully at some point you will find those writing friends. And to be quite honest, out of my creative writing program, that's the best thing I graduated with, is a group of friends who are passionate about reading, passionate about books, writing, and they want to get better at the thing that they love the most, which is just writing stories. And there is no better friends or better group for your writing than a group like this. And I wanna end by saying that writing and working full time do not contradict each other. Most writers who are alive today or lived in the past always worked and wrote at the same time. But there is this fantasy that we are always chasing that one time we will be um, writing full time. But in reality, there are very, very few writers that we can name that do writing full time. Most of them, they teach, they work a nine to five, uh, they have a business, or do, they do some sort of thing that generate money for them so that they can write on the side. And this on the side, or the writing itself, at some point it will generate money, but it's not money that can sustain uh, a living for a very long time. Because you, know, you get book deals and that money runs out and another book deal and that money runs out. The goal is always to work, to have a marketable uh, skill that you can sell so, so that you can provide for your family, for your Self while writing so that you can tell the world about your life, where you come from, about the culture that you lived in, the religion that you were raised in, and everything else that makes you, you. Because at the end of the day, we need to entertain each other by telling each other the stories that we lived through our lifetime. And I think that's the point of art, is windows to each other's worlds. In the meantime, stay creative, keep writing, and until next time.